never seen such a bullying game, the international number one ranked pianist, to challenge a boilermaker who burns a boiler. They are going to battle it out on the piano. The competition takes place on a cruise ship. Morton was indeed very proud. He boarded the ship with a large number of reporters and taunted opponents for being afraid to disembark. The boilermaker was playing in the banqueting hall. The boiler was burning and the harp was playing. He's the one who has two jobs on the cruise ship. Morton came in. There was a complete silence. Morton took out a cigarette, but he did not light it, and he went up to the boilermaker and said, I believe you're sitting in my seat. The boilermaker rose politely. He held out his hand and shook hands with Morton, but Morton didn't even give a eye. He lit his cigarette. Morton showed his dazzling teeth. He wasn't exactly smiling. He's showing him off that diamonds set in his teeth. The boilermaker moved out of the way. Morton took his seat. Then the first round begins. He put a cigarette on the piano. The show began at once, starting with one hand and then with both. This is a jazz-inspired instrument. Morton played with such intoxication, as smooth as silk. His hands were as light as butterflies. Even the audience's eyebrows danced with him. After the piece was finished, applause immediately ran out. Morton picked up the cigarette. It burns right to the edge of the piano. One more second would have burned the piano. What's even better is the soot. It's so complete. Explained so well what Morton just played. Not only evenly, but also perfectly. Morton held up a cigarette and said to the boiler man, Your turn, sailor. Obviously calling sailor is an insult. The boilermaker sat down at the piano. He lifted his cheek, wondering what to play for the battle. He has never played against anyone before. After one minute, he started strumming. The crowd gasped. Compared with Morton's playing, that's not the level. Turns out the boilermaker played Silent Night, a song from Christmas time. It's a very simple piece, but boilermaker is so involved. The people in the audience were starting placing bets. Of course, there are more people who buy Morton to win. At the end of the curve, people began to applaud politely. But Morton's face was grave and thought that Boilermaker is not taking him seriously because he just played such childish stuff. End of the first round. Everyone thinks Morton was the winner. The second round begins. Morton started. He improvised a piece of his own composition. The melody is melodious and elegant. People listen with great devotion. Reporters were kept taking pictures. Suddenly, the music became sorrow. Max went up to look for the boiler man, told him to play seriously. When he looked back with unexpected, even the boiler makers cried. Can't help it. The music makes me cry. Max noticed that the whole crew was betting on boiler man to win, especially the co workers in the boiler room, and especially he bet the salary for a whole year. Please don't mess it up. The Boilermaker expressed that, may he place a bet either. He wanted to buy Morton to win. No, of course not. At this point, Morton finished playing and domineering a kick stool, then gave the victory sign. The crowd immediately burst into applause. The Boilermaker went on. He began to play the piano. The audience was confused again. They talked to each other. Oh my God, how could you do that? Yeah, it's the same tune pianist just played. It's a competition. What a fool. Max was so disappointed and predicted to go to lose by now. Then head into the post. However, is this really the case? Morton's expression followed the song went up and down and getting worse and worse. He had just improvised and had no score at all, hitting the keyboard more than 3,800 times in the process. So even if he played it again, it's hard to play it exactly the same and the Boilermaker only heard it once. He could actually play it such flow by heart. And at the end of every verse, the Boilermaker also made better tuning. It's just incredible. The end of the play. There wasn't a single clap. Everyone was gasps. It was very awkward. Max was desperate. He lost his salary for a whole year, then eat the bet with unwilling. The second round was over. The audience admitted Morton would win again. This is the world piano competition going on. The world's number one piano player vs the anonymous boilermaker. The first two rounds were won by Morton. Third round started. Morton impatiently sat down by the piano. He looked back at the boilermaker and said, You stick this up your ass. Oh lord. He started with a big wave. The hands flying across the keyboard. This track is extremely difficult. He showed that the lifetime of learning. 
which put all in this song. He went all over the world and haven't seen that there are people who can play as perfectly as he can. So he had full confidence. He played much more faster and faster. There was complete silence. Even non-musical people could hear it. That's a hell of the played speed. No one can do that even practiced for 40 years. The Boilermaker looked around. The bruised words had hurt him. He decided to take the battle seriously. At this point, Morton used a big wave as end. The audience applauded. He is worthy as the number one rank in the world. Morton was full of tears, as himself has already won. To bow to thank everyone, the Boilermaker took Max's cigarette to the stage. He walked over to the piano and show it to the audience. The audience thought he was going to imitate Morton. Such like Morton lit it and put it next to the piano. Unexpectedly, the Boilermaker did not light it. It was right there on the piano. The Boilermaker challenges the world's number one pianist. The Boilermaker sat down. He said to Morton, You asked for it, asshole. Then immediately played it. The piano started. It immediately attracted the attention of everyone present. Holy crap. The opening scene shocked the crowd. His hands crossed the keys at a speed that could not be described as fast, like light and shadow floating. Two hands are staggered on the keys, showing the elegance of playing with four hands. It's like it playing ten times faster. How could a human play such speed when the music hits the heart? Boilermaker's eyes closed. He didn't even look at the keys because the speed of playing too fast. The Boilermaker was sweating ecstatically. Morton looked at the Boilermaker with hatred, and looking at the audience, Max got up from the couch, squeeze his head over to watch. The waiter's eyes straightened. Guest asks for beer. He served coke to the guest. The tune is thrown at constant speed. The cigar of the rich man, straight down to his crotch. He didn't even feel it. The lady's wig has fallen off, without knowing it. By this time the Boilermaker was playing at an indescribable speed. It was like eight hands were passing over the keys. This is the equivalent of speeding up a song by 20 times. That's a breakthrough. The bottom line of Morton. He just dropped the glass when the tune was finished. Everyone had hit the pause button. No one had any action. They are still lost in the tune. The boiler man got up. He picked up the cigarette, put it on the string. Oh my God, it really has been smoking. The strings rub hot. It reaches over 260 degrees. Otherwise, the smoke wouldn't have been possible. He held up the cigarette let the people around him to watch, and walk up to Morton and say, You smoke it. I don't know how. Blow out the flame and put it in his mouth. At this moment that the crowd just realized, they all stood up and applauded. The rich man then realized, his trousers were set on fire. The lady found it. Her wig has fallen off. The boiler room co-worker asked the front, Did the boiler man won? Yes, he did. They cheered up and hugged each other so excitedly. The result was that the Boilermaker won. He was held high by the people. At the moment he's gone from nobody to become the number one pianist in the world. Today we will tell the story of this legend pianist 1900. 27 years ago, one day there was a heavy fog over the sea. The cruise ship sailed on the vast sea. Danny picked up an abandoned baby on the piano and he began to raise it. Since it's the beginning of 19th century, so the baby was named 1900. Danny taught him the word and read with him. 1900 grew up day by day. A storm is coming. The hook hit Danny in the back of the head. He sadly passed away. 1900 became an orphan. It never rains, but it pours. There have been reports of child labor on cruise ships. The police came quickly, but they turned the ship up and down. There was no sign of 1900 either. A month later, something happened magically. The sound of a piano came from the auditorium. The cruise visitors were all drawn in. 1900 had soot all over his face. Sitting in front of the piano, the notes slid across his fingers. No one knows when 1900 learned to play the piano. The captain only uttered one sentence. You are out of order. Fuck the regulations. Ten more years later, 1900 had become the chief piano player on the cruise ship, but he often got into trouble. He was often punished by the captain as a boilermaker. Tourists who heard him play on the ship. All the admiration for better performance. The captain also specially found a trumpet player for him, Max. The first meeting between them. Max throwing up in his arms with a flower pot. A strong wind was blowing at sea. Tens of thousands of tons of cruise ships are swaying. But look at 1900. 
having his hands in the pockets and don't know what a feint is. No way to explain more. He was born on this boat. 1900 took Max to the hall. They turn off the break on the piano. Max grabbed the piano for dear life and 1900 started to play. They were playing with the waves, sliding with the wind. Max surprisingly didn't have any discomfort. Instead, he kept praising. And so, they played and smooth as skating until the piano crashes into the wall and stuck into the captain's room. The captain was angry. He punished them both to burn boilers for a week. 1900 spent 27 years on a cruise ship. He never set foot on land. He felt that life on deck is more pure. The people on land looked so tired. On this day, 1900 was playing the piano aimlessly, but an accordion ensemble was heard in the corner. 1900 looked back. The elder gentleman tipped his hat and they began to improvise, as if they had been friends for 30 years. One song over. The elder gentleman told his story. He had only one field, and has never been to the city. But unexpectedly, the time took his wife and son away. Only a daughter was left to live on. To survive, the elder gentleman had to leave the field. One day, he found the most beautiful thing in the world. It was the sea. He decided to start a new life. After listening, 1900 expressed that he understood the old man because he never got off the boat either. The cruise ships have more than 2,000 guests on each trip. 1900's reputation grew and grew. Even members of Congress are willing to squeeze third class with the poor to listen to a piece of 1900. There's even talk of it. 1900 plays better than number one in the world. Words has been widely spread. This is why Morton asked him to battle at the opening scene. Of course that 1900 won. His fame grew again. The record company brought the phonograph in specifically. Make records for him. 1900 played the piano. While looking out of the window, a blonde girl caught his eyes. She is by no means a beauty, but the marvelous blue eyes, like a hook, took the heart of 1900. The piano music wind suddenly became lingering melodious. It became the greatest work of his life. But 1900 just wanted to give the record to girls. It can't be released around the world. He snatched the record back. The cruise ship is about to dock. 1900 silently noticed the girl every day. That night he couldn't hold it in any longer. And came to the girl's room. He found the girl. 1900 gave her a kiss. Then he ran away quickly. The next day. The ship is about to dock. 1900 was not until learned. The girl was the elder gentleman's daughter. What a wonderful fate. When the girl was about to get off the boat, there were too many people and lost the chance to give the record. But girl gave him a kiss. They say goodbye to each other. 1900 got a little angry and broke the record. A few months later, 1900 came to his senses. He is going to land to find a girl. He hugs each member of the crew for goodbye. He went down the steps. He looked at the traffic and the tall buildings soaring into the sky. Stand still for a long time. Then he threw his hat away. Turn around and get back on the cruise. No one knows why he turned back. After that day, 1900 became taciturn. Always cowering in a corner by himself. A few years later, war breaks out. Max chooses to disembark. Since for living, he sold his trumpet at the music shop owners. He saw broken records by 1900. The owner told him that it was collected for scrap on a cruise ship and it was written off. The government is about to blow up the cruise ship. Max could not help worrying with 1900's temper. He must hide in the boat. When 1900 was five, the police couldn't find him, even now. To get the record back, Max told the boss the story of 1900. The owner was very touching. He lent Max the record. Max came to the boat. He started playing records in every corner. Day and night went by. Nothing but the sound of the piano. Maybe he was wrong. Max was just about to leave. A dark figure flashed in the corner. It was 1900. Max asked why he didn't get off the boat that year. 1900 said it wasn't because of what he saw, but he didn't see anything. The city is endless. It scared him. 88 keys is a finite number. However, the infinite amount of music can be created, but the urban keyboard is infinite. He can't compose a tune. That's God's piano. Forgive me, my friend, but I'm not getting up. Max is so sad, but respect the life 1900 has chosen. They hold so tight, as final farewell was said. 
after Max left, 1900 hands embrace with the air, and played the last movement of his life. The piano was drowned in the sound of explosions. The generation of legend pianist has fallen. Max went to the music shop owner. He gave the record back. The music shop owner gave the trumpet back either. This is a wonderful story, much more valuable than a trumpet. So goes the legend of 1900, and it will live on forever. Ending. The legend of 1900. Question for this episode. If you were 1900, would you choose to stay on the cruise, or you pluck up the courage and head for land? Option for a cruise ships, please comments one, and select two for the land. In fact, we was born like 1900. Growing up in a fixed environment, family and relatives are all predetermined. These conditions are like, 88 keys are finite. But after our efforts, there's always a way to play something different, living for a different life. The film is recommended to watch the original. Well, that's all for this video. If you are enjoy, please like and subscribe us. See you next time.